It's a weird one. I'll, I'll give you that. You know, you're just driving through beautiful nature, tall evergreen trees, and then all of a sudden, bam, a nuclear power plant cooling tower. Two of them to be exact. I've actually driven past this area several times and many think that this is where the uh, creator of The Simpsons, Matt Groening, got his inspiration to put Homer Simpson as the safety inspector of the nuclear power plant there in Springfield. We're doomed! Sector 7G is now being isolated. The creator was from these parts, the Northwest, who went to school around here. So it's thought that this could possibly be some of that inspiration. I've never been this close to a cooling tower. However, the Satsop nuclear area here uh, was never completed here in Washington State. <laughs> this is pretty typical of Washington State. One administration comes in, they spend millions of dollars creating all these two towers and everything, and then everybody complained in Washington State, protested, and they just gave up, abandoned it. Projects, and this was never actually a working power plant of any kind here in Satsop. The entire area, everything was abandoned before it even got up and running. Don't know if that's happened anywhere else in the country. When people start to complain, you know, the city legislator listens, I guess, when enough people complain. Uh, yeah, but this is, we are really close. Hard to believe that this, this area was almost a nuclear power plant. I mean, it, it is. It, it just doesn't do it. This is the Satsop Business Park, and they got no trespassing signs everywhere. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I feel like I'm already glowing green from plutonium. <laughs> Jexman! Him's in the window. That's his spot. Mm, such a good boy. Is that blue skies out there, though? Right on, right on. So what's the plan for today? Uh, Jax and I are going to try something a little new. I've been on Highway 8 several times. It'll take you all the way to Ocean Shores. But we're going to try some new areas. We're going to go south. We're going to go to southwest Washington, almost to Astoria, Oregon today. And uh, there's a thousand trails down there that I'll, I'll, I'll end up getting to that's right on the beach that I'm excited about. And uh, we'll just go explore. How's that sound? I agree, I agree. <laughs> I find here <laughs> for the record uh, this happens a lot on the road I'll be driving and just looking to my left and right and if I see something like for instance I was driving on this road up here and looked down here at this little river spot uh, it's almost like little RV slots underneath the bridge which might be cool if it's like really really hot it's not it's only 75 degrees today but this is the Satsop River over here in fact, there is even water access. There's a little trail right through here. Might not be very nice to walk this, to climb up this in the mud and the rain, but look at that. No dead bodies, no dead bodies, no dead bodies. Yes! Look, sand! It's that brown caramel colored sand. I don't know if you can boondock here or not. Look away if you're squimish about dead fish, because for some reason there is a huge pile of dead fish carcass right here. Oh, I don't know. Oh yeah? Oh, female doe over there. Efficient, don't show us deer butt. Keep it pushing, dude. Maybe came down to get a drink of water or something? Kind of surprised she's alone. Oh, and never mind, there's a couple more over there too. There's three of them down here. All three females. Two right there, and then this one catching up. That's pretty cool. I think this would be a really cool spot to cool off when it's warm. So I'll uh, pin this for future use in case I ever find a, a hot day where I need a little private escape. Let me walk up here just to make sure it doesn't say we can't use this spot. Hang on. I do see some signage up here. Let's go check it out. What does this say? Perfect, fantastic, all the information I needed to know. You need a Discover Pass to use these areas in the daytime. No overnight parking or camping, and it's closed 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., so you gotta be out of here by 10 p.m. Can't boondock in this area, but you can join it in the daytime. All right, we'll get back on the road. Okay, 
So I've never in my life even been in Pacific County, Washington. We're in Raymond, Raccoon. Uh, there's a bunch of metal sculptures all over the place here. Yeah, pretty neat welcome actually. They're pretty thick too. They're thicker than half inch, probably five eighths inch steel. A nice little welcome. And then there's that smell of Raymond. Lumber. <laughs> it's, uh, it's no secret that this area is an old lumber. I mean, that's what brought it to life, right? But it's definitely died down some. Uh, but they still produce lumber and put it on trucks and take it everywhere. Are you singing a song? He's singing a song. Here's one of the other entrances here and down that road, more metal sculptures. And across the street here, that's what we're smelling. All that lumber getting ready to go on trucks and then go give us some TP for our bunghole probably. <laughs> Or paper for your printer or whatever. Did I mention we're back on the 101 though? I don't even know how that's possible. 101 loop is up north and it breaks and then it shows back up here. So we're on the scenic byway again. The 101 scenic byway. And, ah, Tokeland. That's where I need to go. We need to go to Tokeland. This is like the apex of the vortex of joint engineering. But we're going the opposite direction. That's pretty funny. But yeah, we're back on 101 which will eventually, here, by the end of the day, get us to the coast, and then it goes right down Washington, right down Oregon, into California, till it turns into the Highway 1. Yeah, another neat little coastal city here, South Bend, Washington. Big 101 sign, and of course the gray skies now. I thought there was a chance of seeing some sunshine, but then I remember we're going towards the ocean, so no, it turns gray. This is a Robert Bush Park dedicated to the ladies of the oyster industry. Nice. I do definitely smell seafood next door. I'm not a big seafood fan anymore. I've tried it a few times. I still will try it, but I'd rather go for a burger. Okay, and here's a sculpture of Robert Bush uh, attending to someone medically, giving him some fluids there with his gun in the other hand. And it's already starting to look a little oceany. I think we're only 10 miles from the ocean. A different part of the Pacific Ocean that I've never been to before. Feeling kind of clammy here. Clamming up, guys. Hey, world's largest oyster. Where's the bottom part of it, though? I don't know if it had a bottom or if they just saved the top. That's not an oyster, that's concrete. Okay, still that's pretty cool. Okay, now we've seen the world's largest oyster and these are oyster shells all through here. Cool. It's not impossible to find parking for the RV, but you gotta think ahead a little bit and you gotta walk a little bit to get places. I am eager to go get parked and settled at this thousand trails down the road at the ocean so that we, I got the e-bike, we can go explore. Um, I did have a bunch of people ask me last time I was at Ocean Shores, why, I mean a bunch, like there was a dozen people who said, Eric, why didn't you go to the thousand trails in Ocean Shores? And I was so confused, because I'd still never found a thousand trails in Ocean Shores. If you click on the map view, there isn't one. But if you call thousand trails and ask them, there is a hidden one that's not advertised. It's not on the map. It's not on their site, but you can reserve it if you call at Ocean Shores. So now I have that one available back home too, but we're already down here now. Okay, wait, you know how the newspapers have the correction page at the end? When I called it the Satsop River underneath that bridge, that was actually the Chehalis River. Satsop River is farther uh, east. And this isn't a river either. This thing that we just saw over here that looked like an ocean, it's actually a, an inlet, a bud, like a Puget Sound area. It's, it's an inlet, basically. The ocean is right over there, but now we're gonna go south on 101 to get to Long Beach. So the ocean is over there. We'll be riding it for a little bit as we get on uh, south into new territory. Oh boy, why don't you just sleep it all off, Jax? Can you guys see him? I don't, I'm testing out some new camera stuff here. I don't know if this is wide angle enough to even see Jax. But I've got my Hero 4 out because the SJ4000 finally crumbed out on me. It just, it refused to focus on anything out the window. So now we are infinity focus out the window and you can probably see all the new bugs from each day. I will continue to clean the windshield every single day, but throughout the day, we are gonna get random splatters.
hard to tell exactly what happened there. I have no idea why people get in such a rush on the 101. It is such a deadly two-lane highway with nothing protecting me from the other lane except some rumble strips. And I just, people just drive like they don't care about life. Man, I love life. I don't want to die. Get away from me with that crap. I would have stopped if there weren't already other people there. It looks like they might need some medical attention too, so that's kind of scary. Okay, now I'm parked. It does pay to uh, pick your own site and be careful. I would say just park the RV and walk around with a cone and the site you like, put your cone there and go back and tell them because this one, this one I actually have room to open up my awning. Mean, I have room to park a car next to my RV. Strange. And then over on this side over here, it's a tight squeeze. But I'll show you their, their system here. It's kind of cool, I guess. We share the power blocks. They have all two numbers in each one. And they have four sewer things. So there's my full hookup. And there's a four piece of water. So I'm going to be here a couple nights. I'll get comfortable. Well, we fed the jacks, man. That's the important part, right? Okay. Interestingly enough, I have solved the problem of that, that couple weeks ago when Jax was puking every single time he started his dry food in the morning. It's because I can't make him drink water first thing. He's so hungry. I even got one of those slow feeder things so that he would slow down, but I can't force my kitty to drink in the morning. So I have to trick him. The very first thing he gets in the morning now is actually half of a little can of food. He gets half of this, 1.5 ounces in his bowl to start. It's a moist, wet food. Therefore, he's kind of getting some moisture in his belly with the food. Then we wait 10 minutes and then I give him dry food. And then for some reason, he's fine. He doesn't puke at all. So he's doing good. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what's to come yet. I am going to explore the surrounding area on bike soon. So you guys take care, Jackson. I will see you soon. Bye.